Whether you love him or hate him, Tyler One is a defining figure in the League of Legends community. I'm Tyler fucking what? He's been harangued for his toxic and aggressive behavior on stream. No mana. You have no mana, bitch. You have no mana! Get the fuck out of here! Let's go! But he's also one of the game's most popular streamers and has recently committed to improving the game. Just make a challenger discord or whatever. Get like the top 500 players and have them all on a discord so when they get in a game, they just get on discord. Tyler One isn't misunderstood. For a long time, he was the toxic aggro person that his permanent ban described. Not banned on Twitch, no. I still have that, but banned from League. But since returning to League of Legends, Tyler One has evolved. He's more presentable, more polite, less toxic. I got you, Chase! Don't worry! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> and right now, he might be exactly what Riot needs to increase interest in their game. This is his story. Tyler motherfucking won. Tyler Tyler One Steinkamp was born on March 6th, 1995 in Missouri. Little is known about his early life, but what we do know is that he created his YouTube account in 2014, but didn't become internet famous until 2016. Be, I'm gonna be rank one streamer in, in a couple months, you'll, you'll fucking see. Not a year, not two years, a couple months. Rank one streamer, 80,000 viewers, don't worry boys. Prior to that though, he was best known to students at Central Methodist University as a computer science student and running back for the school's football team, the Eagles. You're a guy who's not afraid of contact either. I mean, has that always kind of been your style? Um, not at the earlier years, but my junior and senior year, I started getting a little bit bigger and I thought, what the heck, why not? But at some point during his university career, Tyler One decided to drop out of Central Methodist to focus on a different path in life. While he was in university, Tyler One played League of Legends at a high level, reaching Challenger rank 13 during season four in 2014. You, you are watching a Challenger streamer, how's it feel? But Tyler One didn't rise to fame just because he was good at League of Legends. He rose to fame because of the way he played the popular MOBA. I'm Tyler fucking what? See, there are some established norms you see in a lot of high-level League of Legends players. Strong communication. And and gay? No, no, no. Only if they baron. Oh, they baroning? They're baroning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm zero. 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 I'm the bed. Oh, Faker may be in trouble here. Death Mark tries to clean it up for Ryu. Oh, look at the cleanse. Look at the moves. Faker, what was that? Tyler One, at least when he was starting out, really only had one of those things. His mechanics, specifically on Draven, were rock solid. Idiots. I know who the fuck I am. I'm Tyler. Motherfucking One. Oh, shit. Tyler. Motherfucking One. Draven isn't the most popular, powerful, or even effective AD carry champion in League of Legends. In fact, he's a walking meme. Let's admire me, let's admire me, Draven. He's a pompous, blustering, axe-swinging example of pure toxicity who constantly brags about his skills, man, I'm good, and denigrates his enemies. According to lolesports.com, 100% of you think that Draven will win! Basically, Draven is a character designed to be hated, and his actual gameplay mechanics reflect that. Hell yeah. Where most AD carries are more effective, the longer the game goes on, Draven's power is front-loaded. He's a terror to lane against in the early game. But could double have turned this one around? One more hit and you can see the power! Oh, the barrier oh, works out! It's a double kill for Wild Turtle! And once he gets rolling, he's all but unstoppable. They get onto Xfinity, who's gonna get this kill? Right now the engage is still on Afro though. Exhaust, he looks for double it! Sneaky gets the kill! 710 bonus gold! And they've already cleared up by as well. Gyro casualty! Afro also goes down, 54 bonus there. Sneaky is though. rich. 
Draven fights for his fictional fans' adoration every time he kills anything, or catches one of his spinning axes. As long as he's pleasing the fans, he gets extra gold every time he kills an enemy champion. In a nutshell, Draven lives and dies by how aggressive he can be, and by how much his fans care about him. You already know! Give me that shit! You already fucking know! Tyler 1 was what League of Legends fans call a one-trick. He played Draven in every game he could, but it's unclear exactly why he loves the champion so much. You guys may ask, Tyler, you only play Draven. Maybe he identifies with Draven. Maybe he just likes the early game aggression the character encourages and rewards. Maybe he just thinks Draven looks cool. Whatever the reason though, Tyler1 became known for his extremely high-level Draven play. Let's go, boy! Fight me! I'm into it! But he also became known for his incredible toxicity. Damn, yeah, bitch, get the fuck out my lane! Pussy! It's impossible to only play one champion in League of Legends. One of the aspects of a great player is being flexible, adapting to fit the meta and what your team needs from you. Tyler1 was not flexible, and he didn't want to change for his team. If anything, he wanted his team to adapt to him. Don't cast this! Get the fuck off! And he get... <gasps> ah! Okay. And when they didn't, he raged. Holy fucking dick licker motherfucker! If he would've hit that one bitch, it was GG. You do realize that, you fuckboy. Wait, he's actually fucking serious. Holy shit, I thought... That's a fucking joke, holy shit. What the fuck? Tyler1 quickly became the bane of high-level solo queue for his incessant trolling and his penchant for throwing games. I'm not gonna beat intentionally, because I, I don't want banned, so I'm just gonna, uh, you know, turret dive a full HP Anivia. You know what I mean? If you ban Draven, if you pick Draven before him, if you did anything he didn't like, he'd start running it down mid. A now iconic phrase that meant running at the enemy team over and over again, feeding them kills, gold and experience, and throwing the balance of the game in their favor. I'm my fault. This turns even the best game of League into a miserable experience, as you watch whatever time you put into the game slip away into the abyss. But Tyler One's fans loved it and it made him famous. I'm reformed. I'm reformed, boys, don't worry. Psych! I'll live for it, bitch. I'm gonna fuck. You suck dig at Draven. Sick to fucking ear. Tyler1 wasn't just aggressive. He was the most aggressive. He wasn't just toxic. He was the most toxic. He was toxic masculinity made flesh, and he encouraged his fans to make increasingly offensive donation comments on his stream. Hey bitch, don't be talking shit to me, you trash bronzy, my brother Suck. is a challenger. Hashtag you can milk those. It's as bad as it sounds, but on the internet, there's a home for that type of content to not only survive, but flourish. Fans started pouring in, giving Tyler1 nearly 100,000 Twitch followers in May 2016, which meant more views, more donations, more attention, and more criticism. I'm just really confused about how a player like that isn't just completely permanent instantly. I think there's something, there's gotta be something wrong with the system because there's always gonna be toxic players. But it wasn't just pro players speaking out against Tyler One's behavior. It was also David Freak Turley, a League of Legends caster and Riot employee who would go on to become one of the loudest voices against Tyler One. Tyler One's not really that much of a personality though. Like, he's a nobody. And his only marketable skill is being an asshole. Like, to a certain extent, Freak represented Riot's perspective. He knew how many times Tyler1 had been temporarily banned for raging and toxicity before his sudden streaming success. In his eyes, it wasn't an act, and he hated that the community was rewarding a toxic player that was destroying League of Legends from the inside. But Tyler1 wasn't going to be on the inside for much longer. On May 1st, 2016, Tyler1 received a rare ID ban from League of Legends. An ID doesn't work like other bans. It's not just a ban on your account, it's a ban against you. Not banned on Twitch, no. I still have that. But banned from League. Tyler1's account had been banned before, but he could always start a new account and work his way back up the ladder. New account, new me. I don't know how, it's, listen. I've said that probably about 
20 times. New account, new me. I, I mean it. This 21st time. I do, I mean it. Now, with this perma ban in place, Tyler1 couldn't play at all, regardless of the account he used. That meant absolutely no streaming League of Legends, because the second Riot saw the account he was playing on, he was gone. <sighs> Riot, please. God damn it. The attention, the fans, the adoration, it was all slipping away. So Tyler1 reinvented himself. Add magic to the list, bitch. I'm about to show you how to do the best magic tricks. World, motherfuckers. Of course, Tyler1 couldn't just stream League now that he was banned. So he filled the time by doing different variety streams. He played different games. I'm fucking on fire. Play the game. Painted Easter eggs. For the first, for the first one I'm gonna hit up is orange. After I do orange, I, I, like I said, I got 10 more eggs. So I bought a dozen, boys. And even taught people how to cook. If a meal looks good on your plate, It'll 100% taste good in your mouth. So he began streaming games on a delay, knowing the account would be banned by the next time he tried to log in. Back at it a motherfucking gear, boys. Let's get this shit. But occasionally, he'd go live. One such post-ban live match even saw Tyler1 face off against his rival, Freak. No mana. You have no mana, bitch. You have no mana! Get the fuck out of here! Get, like, get off my game. Get off my game. Get off. Get out of here, dude. Go fucking start casting LCS games. Go to, go to fucking North Korea and chess, fucking cast their games. Get out of my game. You should not be playing. He occasionally played the part of the toxic, aggressive bully he was famous for being, but more often than not, he was trying to show how he had reformed. I lost two master promos. I did not say a single word in chat. God, that's fucking reform. It feels good, man. And people were responding well to it. Tyler One seems like a cool guy. I'd probably deal with him if he did get unbanned. I think we can all agree. If he's truly reformed, then if he if he's like if he'll write like a 20-page apology letter to Riot on everything that he's learned, we can agree he should be unbanned. In fact, Tyler One even ran a semi-pro League of Legends amateur tournament the Tyler1 Championship Series, featuring actual teams with serious players facing off to stream viewership that eclipsed even some EU LCS streams. MLGP! Is it TCS? Whoa! Champion! Ah, ah! Tyler1 was the everyman suffering under Riot's so-called unfair bans the way a significant part of League of Legends player base had. While many people who are given bans are actually toxic, many also don't see that to be the case. They see their bans as uncalled for. Are you serious? I just got Tyler1, dude. In Tyler1, that segment of the League community found their martyr. And that was most evident in October 2017, when a Riot employee, Aaron Sanjuro Rutledge, went to the R League of Legends Discord server to say that Tyler1 looked like a damn homunculus and that he'd die from a coke overdose or testicular cancer from all the steroids. Sandro was later fired for those comments, but his grudge against Tyler1 was personal. He had to ban several of Tyler1's accounts, which meant Tyler1 and his toxicity was giving him a ton of work. But Tyler1's response fitting his new reformed identity was perfectly reasonable. Uh, my accounts all still getting banned. Until, unless, uh, fuck. As soon as they are publicly known, that guy they're all banned. All the board. Or they get banned. Fans started making hashtag free Tyler1 signs to show during LCS broadcasts, which Riot eventually banned too. He wasn't just banned from League, fans were even banned from bringing up his name on official broadcasts. To his fans, Tyler1 was the oppressed underdog fighting back against a broken system. Until the system finally changed. T1 has been unbanned from League of Legends. I'm sure, I'm sure you guys have probably, probably heard the news by now. 
that is it true. After 613 days, I can finally, finally play League of Legends without getting my accounts banned. On January 8th, Tyler1 returned to Twitch with a League of Legends stream, dressed as the adoration-needing, crowd-pleasing Draven to a peak of 386,000 concurrent viewers, breaking the previous record set by Lee Faker Sanghyuk. His stream was never massive, but now, all of a sudden, it was the biggest. And once he was back, Tyler1 made good on his promise of reform. I kept my, my mental strong enough to be unbanned from League of Legends. And thank you for that, Riot. Much love. Draven may have been banned on his first game back. That's fine, that's fine. I don't think I'm gonna be playing much Draven for, for the next couple weeks. But there was less rage. I'll tell you what I'm not kidding about, Riot. This right here. Yeah, you guys thought I was kidding, huh? Yeah, you guys thought it was funny? I'm kidding, no seriously. Sure, his jokes could still be crass at times. Bane is much, much more aid skill with than Draven. That's stupid, you're dumb. Gonna lose. But he stayed on the straight and narrow. No running it down mid, no ruining games, even picking champions other than Draven when the situation called for it. You'd rather ban Draven over Vayne. Vayne snowballs harder than anybody in the game. What are you talking about? Recently, Tyler1 has even implemented an ad hoc solution to League's lack of effective communication for players, inviting his solo queue teammates into Discord voice chat with him so they can actually work together as a team at a high level. We got fight up here! We're fighting, chill! Let's go, baby! We're chill! We're fighting! This shit, this bitch! Tyler One's Whirlwind Redemption Tour came to a head at the NALCS 2018 Summer Finals, where Riot invited him on stage to play a show match with streamers, personalities, and even Freak. I respect you. We're, okay. As a person, as a gamer, as a streamer, I believe we're gonna win bot lane. Thank yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have faith. Tyler One has left the game. Uh, this was all a prank. There was no show match ever planned. <laughs> yeah. He was just checking that the uh, Alt F4 keys worked. Right. Oh, 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 the five man! Oh, oh, the side on Q! What? <laughs> what? I got to destroy! This is an absolute massacre. The throw machine. Oh, three kills to God. one. I Dream, dream team coming out on top. Crushing defeat for Tyler1, making his debut on the LCS stage. From Tyler1 signs being banned at the 2017 finals to playing on stage, Tyler1's image had totally turned around. By inviting him on stage, Riot had effectively confirmed that they supported the person Tyler1 had become, that his reformation was authentic. My forehead is so shiny, you're looking at a mirror. That gorgeous man was you. Oh, wait, is that good? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That was a compliment. Thank you. But one has to wonder, how authentic is Riot's approval? Tyler1 is now one of the most popular streamers in League of Legends, thanks in part to Riot unbanning him. Those stream views are good for Riot, and bringing him on stage at finals was an endorsement of Tyler's streams. Riot has, in effect, profited off of Tyler1's reformation. But the problems that created Tyler1 still exist. Yeah, I'm feeding! Fuck this game! League of Legends solo queue can still be a toxic place, and the tools for keeping toxic players out of the game aren't as strong as they can be. Players can just start new accounts and effectively smurf, trolling even lower level players who aren't as committed to playing the game. They are li I'm actually- they're actually griefing me. No bullshit! I'm actually being trolled! On stream! <laughs> the systemic problems that created Tyler1 have yet to be addressed, and as if this were all a reality show, we're just supposed to appreciate the fact that we have one person who seems to have gotten better. Bro, what the fuck? Tyler1 may have reformed, but League of Legends hasn't. If you love Tyler1, nothing is really going to change your mind. If you hate Tyler1, your situation is probably the same. Whether he's actually reformed or not, the Tyler1 of 2018 is a very different beast to the Tyler1 of 2016. Dude, great job. Fuck it, let's play for kills, baby! No problem, buddy, got your back. When Tyler1 was banned, he was the physical manifestation of just about everything wrong with online toxicity.
Yeah, bitch, get the fuck out my lane, pussy. These days, he's a streamer in the mold of any number of loud online personalities. But will I hard carry this? Yes, I fucking will, because I'm team one, baby. He's part of a growing breed of modern reality show stars, playing and performing for the amusement of tens of thousands of Twitch viewers. Get this shit off me! Ah! Ah! Get this shit off me! Tyler One has evolved. From a small-time streamer, to a meme, to a defining face for the League of Legends community. What's up? Hey! Hey! Yaira Hoopy! Whether you love him or hate him, he's someone you rally behind or against. He's Tyler One, and he's not going anywhere. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Draven out.